good afternoon everyone ladies and gentlemen on behalf of professor s ganesh director it kanpur and the entire institute community i shweta kumar your host for this afternoon would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you present here today at the 40th reunion of the class of 1984 this is a very momentous occasion as i'm pleased to inform you that we recently celebrated 64 glorious years of institute's foundation I would now request Professor S Ganesh Director IIT Kanpur to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. <laughs> Requesting Mr Alok Tandon batch representative to kindly take his seat on stage. I now humbly request Dr Dev Dino Joneja batch representative class of 1984 to kindly join on the dais. <laughs> Requesting Mr Ajay Jain to please join us on the stage <laughs> i now humbly request all our guests present on stage to please come forward for the ceremonial lighting of the lamp which symbolizes knowledge and wisdom शुभम करोति कल्याण आरोग्यम धन संपदा शत्रु बुद्धि विनाशा दीप ज्योतिर्नमोस्तु ते एट द कमेंसमेंट ऑफ एनी ऑस्पिशियस ओकेजन ज्योत हैज बीन ऑब्सर्वड द लाइटिंग ऑफ लैम्प सिंबलाइजेस अबंडेंस प्रोस्पेरिटी and knowledge dispelling darkness and ignorance thank you everyone ladies and gentlemen reunion is not about counting the number of years rather it's about relieving and cherishing memories and time to be grateful for the beautiful journey you had as a student of iit kanpur despite the years that have passed all i'm sure all of you remained young at your heart yes no <laughs> so why don't we begin today by relieving our old days and becoming rowdy students once again <laughs> Let's make this 40th reunion memorable. I request everyone to clap with me 3 times and shout shout 40 as loud as you can. 40 40 That was nice but we can do it once more because we know that India won its World Cup in 1983. So let's do it with even more more josh. Come on with I just can Thank you. Now let me take you to a sh- on a short trip down the memory lane. 45 years ago, more than 200 young boys and seven girls from across India decided to embark on a challenging journey away from the comforts of their home all the way to a city called Kanpur, now named Kanpur, to be a part of this prestigious institute called IIT Kanpur. चाय अठन्नी की थी समोसा बारह आने का कैप्सटन का पैक एक रुपए का और ओल्ड मॉन्ग पचास रुपए की ट्यूशन फीस दो सौ रुपए की थी हॉस्टल रेंट सौ रुपए का और महीने का मेज बिल एक सौ पचास रुपए का गेट से हॉल टू तक चार स्पीड ब्रेकर्स होते थे आईटी बस 
and Ganesh Jika Tempo were mostly used means of transport. It was an era of Amitabh Bachchan, Dharmendra, Rekha, Hema Malini, Dimple Kapadia. <laughs> I'm coming to that. <laughs> Famous villains were Ajit Khan, Prem Chopra, and Vamp was definitely <laughs> Helen. <laughs> Bobby, Jungli, and Silsila were Bollywood blockbusters. And the famous song that demanded maximum number of repeats was... <laughs> I was told, Chahe Mujhe Koi Jungli Kai. <laughs> Movies in L7 on Saturday and Sunday night was a major attraction. And the most common phrase used during movie time was? Repeat, repeat and? Focus. <laughs> MTK Chai was always special. And <laughs> MTK Chai was always special. And most of you could be found in Red Rose or ordering Shashi Canteen Ka Hakka Chow. Major attractions in city were Chungfa, Futu, and Yog. Famous jargons at the other point were Fatru, Fudda, Siud, Fandagol, Chak Diya, Max Kar Diya, Tel Ho Gaya. Tiwari Paan Ka Chalu Khata almost sab ka tha. Aur Sundar Lal, Puttan Lal Ka Pata, ab sab ko rehta tha. Sundar Lal Puttan Lal bole to Dhobis, who would provide overnight service. Talash rehti thi Shishu Pal ji ki, as he would do odd jobs at student gym khana. Aur intazar rehta tha Shiv Charan ji ka. Shiv Charan ji bole to mail messenger, who would bring admission letters, scholarship letters, appointment letters, including Shadi ke proposal letters with girls or boys photograph inside that. The brawl between Hall 2 and Hall 3 had always been famous for various reasons. <laughs> Battle of supremacy would range right from competing during the cultural festivals to sports to stealing of fuses to mass shouting from rooftop during blackouts to gali competition. It only reminds me of a famous quote by Atal Bihari Bajpai ji. Kaurav Kaun, Kaun Pandav, Tedha Sawal hai. Dono or Fela, Shakuni ka koot, Jal hai. Ladies and gentlemen, this was an honored batch to see famous personalities like Jagjit Singh, Chitra Singh, Gulam Ali, Hemant Kumar to visit the campus during this day. A studious match to remember the electrifying lectures of Professor M. M. Oberoi, Professor Sahasrabuddhi, Professor Parasnes, Professor Malik, Professor Dhande, Professor R. N. Biswas, and Professor Usha Kumar. A sports-loving patch to see Asia Games and witness India winning its first World Cup in 1983 under the cap captaincy of Mr. Kapil Dev a dynamic batch who ran the mess by themselves during the mess workers' strike and did makeshift arrangements at airstrip when Pandal fell in cultural fest due to heavy rains and power shutdown at Panki. And last but not least, a blessed batch. As 200 girls came as five girls chose their life partner here. I can't personally share all your recollections of IIT Kanpur, but we talked with few of your classmates to try to get a closer look at the class of 1984, whose members have such nicknames. I request those who are present here to kindly acknowledge by raising their hand. Pidli. Hey. Loki. Hey. Shanti. Hey. Oily. Charlie, yeah. Pondi, <laughs> Gandhi Parivar. <laughs> this is all I have from the treasure of memories of class of 1984. I hope I got my facts right.
On this beautiful day, let's all remember to laugh, share fond memories, and make new memories that we can talk about in our next reunion. We are so pleased that we gathered here, gathered here today in person, something we can't take it for granted anymore. Now, without taking any more of your precious time, I would like to invite Professor S. Ganesh, Director IT Kanpur, to kindly address the gathering. So, very uh, good afternoon to all of you, and uh, welcome to IIT Conpire. Uh, welcome back. In fact, uh, 30 years. I'm sure uh, some of you had the opportunity. 40 years, sorry, 40 years. Some of you had the opportunity to visit in between. Uh, some of you maybe. Okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Looks like I had a bend. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, you know, I'm Ganesh, uh, for those who uh, do not know me, I'm a faculty in the Department of Biological Sciences and Bioengineering. I've been here in the Institute for 22 years now. Uh, I've been the Deputy Director, now I hold the current, uh, you know, additional responsibility of, uh, you know, Officiating Director, so waiting for a new Director to take over the charge. So what we thought that we should do is to share some of the uh, recent development in the Institute with regard to its academic research and other uh, you know, uh, plans that we have, what we have done and what we wish to do and so on. Therefore, it sort of gives you an idea as to where the Institute is currently and what we are really looking at as, as the Institute grows. Um, so I'll, since we do not have much time, I may be, you know, sort of briefly touch upon, uh, you know, one of the major strengths of IIT Kanpur is the computing powers, right? Whether it is teaching, research, and even infrastructure, that is something that we continue to hold on, and we have a, a supercomputer. Uh, you know, a couple of years back, it was installed, so that again added to the facility that we have, and still we believe we are number one in this, uh, you know, uh, field. And the other thing is, of course, we are very careful about the, the, the campus, uh, especially the green cover, uh, I'm sure many of you would have noticed that the green cover has increased over the years uh, as the buildings also have increased in the campus. You know, that is something that I'm sure all of you would have noticed that, you know, it has become much greener. You know, that is something that really an active effort that goes in and to make, make sure that we have a very good green <coughs> surrounding. And uh, in terms of uh, the area, campus area, it remained the same as it was when you joined here. but. You know, we have grown in terms of the faculty. Uh, we have close to 600 now, if I had all the emeritus and other <clears throat> full-time visiting faculty. And the uh, UG student and PG student ratio has almost become equal. We are, in fact, uh, 9,600 students, roughly, we have right now. Uh, uh, and we are, soon we may be touching about 10,000 students. That's a, you know, a increase if you have to compare even what it was some four or five years back. So we have close to 170 postdocs, and, and of course we are very, very proud of our alumni base, which is 43,000 plus, which is, really makes a huge difference in terms of what the institute has contributed. You know, that is something that we are extremely proud of. We are very, very uh, happy to have you again here. Um, so just to look at the academic units, uh, those departments that are identified in red color front are the ones that are added recently. We have added a department called Sustainable Energy Engineering and Department of Design, which was a program now we converted into a full-fledged department. In science, we have added cognitive science. We have added a department called Space, which is Space, Planetary, Astronomical Sciences and Engineering. Uh, humanities used to have economics as one of the uh, specialization, but now we have an independent department called Economic Sciences. Uh, you know, it's about eight, nine, eight years old. Uh, of course, we have multiple interdisciplinary programs. So these are some of the recent happenings. And of course, for many of you, the biological sciences and bioengineering itself, although it is pretty old now, it's about 22 years old, but that's also a department that came in later. <clears throat> so one of the major uh, you know, programs that we started is the CE Masters program, which is completely online. That is for working professionals. You can see that a large number of 
disciplines that we have offered in this eMaster platform. So we have close to about 600 students who are crediting. Already about 100 plus have graduated with this program. This is one of the popular program among the working professionals, so which we, we believe could make a difference in sort of you know continuing education mode. So that's something that we are evolving. We, we are planning to add more courses as per the industry need. And some of the PSUs are very, very keen to <coughs> partner with us uh, in, in offering. HAL we are in discussion with and so on. Uh, you know, you all know that how uh, flexible the academic system is at IIT Kanpur, and, and we have made it far more flexible. <coughs> So we have minor, double major, and dual degree. So we no longer admit students to the, uh, you know, the dual degree uh, at the time of entry. So it is everyone enters into the four-year undergraduate program, and they have they can opt for whichever form they want. Of course, minor is one of the popular program. Very large number of students uh, take minors in other disciplines, but we also have double major. They can stay for one more year and have another undergraduate you know, major, or you can have a dual degree, you can do a master's, but this master's could be the parent department or any department that you know, offer a master's program here. So you know, as we do, we uh, revamp the curriculum every 10 years, and uh, we bring in new uh, uh, courses and programs and you know, even flexibility. So one other thing that we have started is the scheme discipline, which is social science, communication, humanities, economics, management, environment, like, you know, pe you know, students can opt for this as well if they are not very happy with any other. And of course, it's, we have moved into a credit-based program so they can even complete the credit requirement in three and a half years and graduate. You know, they don't need to wait for the four-year program. And we also have now the exit de degree options for students uh, if, if for one reason or other they're unable to you know, continue, even including inadequate performance. We have a BS in applied science kind, you know, we are sort of recently approved. So, and we also allow certain credits that they can earn through MOOCs, uh, either that are offered, uh, you know, within the country as part of the NPTEL platform, all IITs and IIC together, or even other such, you know, programs where the exams are proctored, you know, where you can take in the credit. So that is, that is allowed. Therefore, if there are students who are really looking at certain subjects wherein they want to get credits and it's not offered here, they can certainly do that. <clears throat> uh, you know, one uh, major initiative that you have taken is to increase the faculty number because we are you know, launching new academic programs, we are launching new academic Department, so the obviously the number is increasing. So we have 500, close to 580 uh, as on today, and we have had you know probably about 30 offers have already been made, and we we hope that this number would grow because that is extremely important if you are to really grow. Uh, you can see that you know the expansion happened in the last 10 years. You know you can see that a large number of faculty joined. Of course, the number is also because many faculty retire, you know, that is also there, so the actual number is, is, is pretty. So we have, probably in six years, we have offered about 200, 200 new faculty have joined, you know, that's a considerable number given the strength that we have. Uh, I'm sure all of you are aware that, you know, the faculty, of course, make huge difference in terms of, you know, that, you know, the R&D and other, uh, a number of awards have, you know, the faculty have received. I would like to highlight the, uh, the Infosys Prize, that is this year, two faculty from our uh, institute have been selected for the Infosys Prize. This is again very, very prestigious award that is given not only to you know, faculty that are within the country, but it is even considered you know, from abroad. So in that way, uh, Professor Arun Shukla and Professor Sachinal Tripathi, they have been you know, selected for engineering science and life sciences. You know, that's, a, you know, I believe, it's a great achievement. And of course, there are many fellowship the recent being Professor Avinash Agarwal from Mechanical Engineering being inducted in the World uh, you know, TWAS Fellowship. That's the, you know, uh, you know it's really an highlight. Uh, you know, a number of other awards that are, that are listed here. So for the want of time, I, I would skip. It's there on the screen. Uh, and so is the uh, Shanti Swar Patnagar Award. Again, it is for an Indian government award that is considered very prestigious. Uh, you know, is uh, again you find a large number of faculty being recognized. So, in terms of research and development, uh, you know, we have a very good ecosystem. So that's one, of course, the academic departments that really impart training in 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 research, 
And then we have the interdisciplinary academic program wherein faculty come together and offer interdisciplinary program. And then we have uh, you know, thematic centers of excellence. These are R&D centers which are focused on research. There are no academic program, but they are a huge facility. Then there are you know, uh, you know, multi-investigator driven projects. To support that, we have facilities, research facilities, and we also have two uh, you know, independent entities called FIRST, which is an incubator, which is a Section 8 company found by IIT Kanpur. Likewise, we have another one called Technopark, which is science uh, research park, uh, which we are building. And I would talk about these two little details, therefore you can understand what are the new initiatives that we have. Uh, you know, our overall ranking is, you know, number four in engineering, but when it comes to innovation category, uh, IIT Kanpur is number, you know, is number one in the country uh, for its uh, innovation, and, and that is because of the ecosystem. So these are some of the technologies that have been, you know, it's highlighted here. Some, many of them have been commercialized, the one that you see, uh, you know, national blockchain e-governance. This is, you know, it's for the government of India that uh, we have done that. And there are other technologies that have been licensed to many different companies. Uh, something that is featured here. So we have more than 1,000 IPRs that are filed and about 400 granted. So we currently it's about 100 uh, uh, patents per year. That is what we are filing. But what is uh, is notable is that our conversion rate, you know, is about 14%. You know, tech transfer that is considered to be good because the global average is about five to six. In that, we, we do believe that. It could still improve, but that still is a, a significant you know, achievement. Uh, this is just a given brief about the incubator that we have. Uh, uh, this is called a startup incubation and innovation center at IIT Kanpur. So we have close to 160 companies already on campus. As many have already graduated. Uh, it's about 210 crore rupees is a cumulative turnover portfolio of these companies. Uh, you know, you can really look at it's there in every uh, uh, area, whether it is health, whether it is, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, manufacturing, you have companies that are there. Uh, more than 4,000 jobs have been created. 75 of them are, are women-led you know, companies. That's, again, we are very, very uh, proud of. So more than a crore revenue made, and there were 16 portfolios. That's what in the year 22, 23. So some of these companies are shown on the right side. The NDU Air is a startup that is you know, nurtured by a faculty from aerospace engineering. It's on the drone, which is extensively used for uh, uh, delivery of medicine in, 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 in Uttarakhand and other hilly areas. Hofgrid is again uh, a company uh, that's uh, making uh, uh, you know, the batteries for that. And Shell has really invested a lot. This is a company that we are looking at as something that would really become an unicorn. And then you have a company called Fool, which is, again, it's well known in the newspaper. Uh, they are known for converting the flower waste from the temple to many other products, one of them being the leather, which they call as fleather. You know? So that has a very similar property as leather, but it's a vegan leather. So this is, uh, you know, companies, again, you know, there are uh, uh, movie stars who have invested in these companies. And these are some of these achievements of the you know, the incubators or startups from IIT Kanpur. Uh, I will not go into the detail. Uh, but just to give an example is one is the NOCOP. It's a, it's a company which originally they were making robots for cleaning the solar panels, you know. But during the uh, pandemic, you know, they took up a challenging project to make an invasive ventilator. So from product design to you know, being in the market, it was done in about 10 months with help of faculty and alumni together as a team that we have done. And in fact, there is a book that really talks about how it was done in challenging period when even movement was difficult, we are able to do. But, you know, this product is now, is being exported. And this, this company is one of the top three companies that sell the uh, uh, ventilators. In that, that's really a really incredible story that is captured even in the book that is also a bestseller in the Amazon. So we have more than 5,000 units that have already been installed in various hospitals. So, you know, these are some of the centers that we have. Uh, yeah, I'll not get into the details. Uh, Center for Nanoscience, again, some of these centers have uh, spun off their own companies, like eSpin is a company that made masks during the complete lockdown period from the campus. You know, the Swasa mask, some of you would have used it. That is from IIT Kanpur. 
And then, of course, we have a facility called National Center for Flexible Electronics. Again, they look at uh, you know, printing circuits on different surfaces, and they have many applications. Some of them have already been you know, marketed or commercialized. So we have a center for cybersecurity. Again, I would say this is one of the you know, very core strength of IIT Kanpur, and which has taken up several projects of national importance. And recently, uh, last to last month, we have uh, opened a new center called Mehta Family Center for Engineering and Medicine. Uh, this is uh, you know, part supported by Mehta Family Foundation. Uh, this is mainly to bring in engineering technology to medicine. So this is, you know, it has a primary focus that is listed here, regional radio medicine, molecular medicine, and digital medicine. So this is, a facility is up and running now, so faculty are being hired, and, and these are the, you know, focus areas. So, uh, you know, IIT Kanpur also is involved in developing the test bed for 5G uh, in telecommunication, and in fact, uh, you know, this, this, the contributions of IIT Kanpur along with IIT Madras, is, you know, highlighted even by the Prime Minister. And in fact, the technology that was developed is licensed to the Tejas Network, which is a Tata-owned company. You know, that is, you know, they're going to really use it for their, uh, you know, forming the backbone for the communication. Uh, these are some of those snippets I'll not get into. But we also have a center which is called a Center for Developing Intelligent System. Uh, uh, this center uses A and ML approach for many of the challenging problems, and I would certainly, uh, you know, we really have a short time, but anyone interested in this domain, certainly we will be very happy to connect with people because they are really doing a wonderful job there. Uh, we also have a center of excellence in unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, this is again a, a strength of IIT Kanpur with aerospace engineering and other departments like computer science and electrical engineering. We have a very good core strength in this area. And this is, uh, you know, in fact, supported by the government as well. So we have uh, even an MTEC courses that is now be currently being offered, MTEC program and unmanned aerial systems. You know, this is because there's a heavy demand of this particular, you know, uh, you know, drones is, uh, in, the, in the, the country. Uh, this is what I was talking about. Uh, ID Kanpur has developed uh, an, an AI engine called Centralized Public Grievance to Drizzle and Monitoring System, or CPGRAMS portal popularly known. Uh, this is uh, basically managed by the Prime Minister of India's office. Uh, this is bas basically a grievance management you know, portal wherein anyone can go and lodge a complaint or grievance. And this platform really you know, screens those you know, complaints. I mean, anybody can use any of the language that is known, but you know, it works independent of the language. It doesn't look at the text, but it looks at the context and, and sorts the message to relevance, you know, uh, you know, department sections and does a follow-up. Uh, it's something that, you know, is really appreciated by the government. And in fact, uh, this uh, initiative by the institute was, you know, sort of uh, recognized by the government of India by giving the silver medal, national award for e-governance uh, last year. So we have uh, a COE uh, that is funded by DRDO. This is mainly looking at materials as the interface uh, in, in defense applications. There are verticals, five different verticals that are identified. So we have core faculty who are looking at it. Again, this is something that recently launched by you know, the institute in support from the DRDO. Uh, uh, this is uh, something that you know, is, is part of the R&D ecosystem. So we, I mentioned about the research park. So basically, we are building a huge infrastructure for housing the R&D labs of the industry. So we have close to 10 different companies that are already housed. This is one of the major investments. The pharma company called Laris Lab is really funding close to about 100 crores investment on campus to set up a facility. And the idea is to make a platform for gene delivery application. This is primarily based on the IPR that are developed on campus by one of our faculty. So it is commercialized to them. So it, it really looks at you know, treating uh, any of the genetic disorders by delivering the correct gene using one of the vectors that's based on the virus. You know, it's, it's basically a platform technology that we are developing. So they are putting in a GMP facility for producing this virus in the first phase. If it is successful, then they will go for you know, a large scale production in, in their campus. So that's the idea. That's a huge investment that we have here. Uh, the other, uh, you know, tie-up is with, uh, you know, what is called as a cancer research center in, in Lucknow with uh, 
Carquinos. It's, it's a private company funded by both uh, Reliance and Tata's. So what we have done is we have done a tie-up with them. So this basically, the Carquinos is going to give a free genomic uh, diagnostics for the cancer patients from the state of Uttar Pradesh, right? So it and and it it really produces a large amount of data. So our you know people from BSB and other departments are going to analyze this data, and this is going to really help. One is of course diagnosis, but we are also looking at a susceptibility, disease prevalence, and what is the burden rate. You know that is something that we have a tie up. So that is something which is at a massive scale that we are going to start, and the facility is being set up uh, right uh, now, and we have already started some of these initiatives. So we have launched a new school called Kotak School of Sustainability. Uh, this was launched, uh, now it's uh, 14th November. So uh, this was launched by the minister. Uh, so it is, it's, it's, a, it's a school that looks at the verticals that are shown here uh, on the left side. So it's a new initiative, large number of faculty, close to about 70 faculty members from different departments are associated with the school. So, it, you know, already we have one department which is part of it, which is this, the uh, sustainable energy engineering. So we have a center which is part of it. And, and uh, this is something that, again, we look as one of the, you know, contemporary topic that, that we are taken up as, as something that is relevant. You know, it's being funded part by Kotak, uh, Mahindra Bank. They have pledged uh, 120 crores for establishing the schools. So we are very grateful to the alumni for their support. Uh, in fact, even this particular school is something that could, you, you could do it because of the you know, really initiative taken by Mr. Sudhakar Kasavan, again, our alum, uh, you know, who also has set up a center for Chandra Kanta Kasavan Center for Energy Policy and Climate Solution, which is part of this larger school now. But it is truly his uh, uh, you know, uh, advice and initiative that really we could take it up you know, in a big way and we have the school. Likewise, uh, Mr. Muktesh Pant, uh, you know, he has funded a center called Shivani Center for Nurture and Reintegration of Hindi and other Indian language. Uh, again, this is a center that helps the students uh, a soft landing when they enter the program here. They may have difficulty in understanding English. So this center also helps them in that. And in fact, as part of the center's initiative, we are translating many of the technical you know, books into the native languages. Therefore, they can have a better understanding to begin with before you know, they get into the mainstream English. Apart from them, that, this center also has many uh, literature you know, related books and cultivates that as one of the, you know, the you know, interest in the student group. You know, that's also a huge, huge contribution from the alumni. So we have other such, you know, really support that uh, from the alumni which has really made a difference in the campus and beyond the campus. One is uh, Dr. Ranjit Singh Roji Siksha Kendra, which is funded by, uh, which was funded by Dr. Ranjit Singh, our, you know, former, uh, and, and this center, if you had a chance, you can look at it. It really looks at the rural, you know, community, how we can empower them, how we can train them, therefore they can take up you know, jobs that therefore they need not migrate to the city. So this is something, a phenomenal job that is done. And we are also, you know, expanding its activity to train the students who are in the remote rural area. So this is also, you know, education is also part of this. And we have a new facility, Jeet Pindra Unit Operations Lab as part of the chemical engineering. We have J. Palur Non-Invasive Brain Stimulation Laboratory that was established as part of the Cognitive Science Department, so again, with uh, generous support from uh, late Mr. J. Pulur, uh, who was a you know alum from computer science and engineering. This is a brief about the international collaborations. So we have uh, you know a multiple collaborations. Some of them I'm going to discuss. Where we do offer what is called a joint degree programs. So we have 14 joint degree programs with universities, mainly currently at the PhD level. Uh, for example, National Chiu Tung University in Taiwan. New York University, Latrobe University, and Melbourne University, we have joint PhD students. Uh, uh, the degree also awarded by both the universities. And there are close to about 80 such students currently enrolled. You know, a couple of them are already graduated. Uh, there are other models, like for example, we have with uh, research institutes like Reich in Japan, we have joint supervision programs. So we have two supervisors, but it's a degree awarded by IIT Kanpur, and of course, uh, student exchange and so on. But we also have launched uh, the, you know, our Senate and 
you know, so I will be approved, for example, for joint master's program and joint MBA program as well. So that is something that we would like to take up, you know, in a big way. Uh, these are some of the highlights of our engagement with different universities. Uh, you know, this is, I'll just touch upon briefly on the infrastructure. Uh, as you may have seen, you know, the number of buildings have increased, obviously, because the student strength has increased and there are new uh, academic programs and research focus. Therefore, we have to have offices, research labs, and, and residential areas. That's something that, you know, is really massive uh, uh, the building construction happened in the last five, six years. Uh, but, you know, we, 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 we are still, you know, able to keep the green cover and minimize the footprint of the buildings. Uh, we are going vertical, unlike the earlier buildings that are spread out all across. And you can see that one of the largest building is the Diamond Jubilee Academic Complex, uh, which houses all the major labs there. And we have engineering science building one, two, three, and so on. Uh, and of course, the core lab, uh, world core lab also is extended. And these are some of the residential buildings that have come up. We have type three apartments, 112 apartments for faculty and officers. And we have the Mehta Family Center for Engineering Medicine, that building just inaugurated. We have all of residents 14, and we are going to construct two more hostels, 15 and 16, uh, to take care of the needs of the students. We have research complex uh, that is mainly to you know, establish large research facility, Technopark I mentioned. Uh, the building that you see uh, is the one that would house the lab, R&D labs of the industry. And of course, we are building what is called the faculty building annex. This is mainly to house all the administrative offices in one building, right, to, you know. So these are some of the constructions that, that's going on. And of course, uh, you know, one major initiative that happened is uh, setting up this IIT Kanpur Development Foundation, what you call IITK DF, uh, which is a Section 8 company. This was set up to take care of the alumni relations and fundraising activities. Now we have a professional group of people who run this, and it's an independent company fully owned by IIT Kanpur. So we have the directors that are there. We are very extremely grateful to our alumni who are contributing a lot in this. We have Dr. B. R. Mohan Reddy. Uh, Mr. Raju Ranjan and Mr. Raju Swarup, they are board members who really help us in, in, in really making this difference that what you have seen, the way now the interaction happens, even the alumni reunions are now organized by this IITK DF and Mr. Kapil Kaul is the CEO, full-time CEO of this company. So this is something that uh, we thought that the best way to engage with the alumni, that there were a uh, lot of uh, delays and and, and uh, because we, it was, you know, normally handled by a dean which, who has got additional responsibility, I'm sure he would have found a difference now. In terms of fundraising activities, you can see that uh, in the last five years, uh, our, you know, we are able to raise close to 180 crores. That was in 2023. And, uh, you know, in, if you really look at the realized amount from 1st April, uh, to 21st December 2023, you can see that what is the amount like. You know? So that's something that we are really looking at. CSR is one such activity, like, you know, we, we can really tap that uh, possibility. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, whatever amount that is shown is, including the funds that is deposited at IITK Foundation USA. That's how, through which we get the funding here at IIT Kanpur. I mean, really, we would like to thank the donors. Um, some of you are here. I'm really, really, on, on behalf of the Institute, would like to thank the donors for really supporting, you know, the many activities that, that we have. Uh, you know, it's really, really heartening, not only uh, the funding, but beyond funding, you know, the amount of time some of you spend in really shaping the schools and different programs is something that we are extremely, you know, grateful uh, for the time that you give in advising uh, how uh, the program should grow. So the initiatives taken by different batches during the reunions that are listed here, uh, you know, these are all that has come out of the discussion that happened during the reunion. We are again very, very grateful to everyone. This is the year 22, 23. And, uh, you know, so we, not only we have the reunion here, but we do uh, have the reunions when we visit to different countries. These are some of them that are, that we happened. Uh, in, in, for example, 
in Australia or US, we try to reach out to the alumni whenever we visit abroad. <coughs> this is about the reunions this year. Uh, so we had like the 40th reunion, 10th reunion, and that is listed here, some other photographs we have. So I will end my talk with uh, you know, uh, an overview on the Gangwal School of Medical Science and Technology. Uh, we are very grateful to Dave for all the support and, and the advisors as part of the, you know, the advisory board. This school uh, you know, has three major verticals. One, of course, is the hospital because that forms the back backbone of the medical school because we need to have a hospital. And then we have the R&D centers, which you call as center of excellence in futuric medicine. So you can see that some of the disciplines have already been mentioned. And the third vertical is, 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 is academics, is something that we would start very soon. The idea of this school is that can we blend engineering and medicine, you know. So in India, traditionally, the medical universities are standalone medical universities, which primarily looks at healthcare as a service, you know, if you really look at the research contributions of the medical schools, especially beyond the you know, uh, classical clinical discipline, it is very, very limited. And that's also because of you know, the focus uh, uh, or the kind of a training that they have. Unlike a large university where you have engineering, science, humanities, and medicine together, the kind of collaboration, the kind of focus that you would have is very, very different. And that's the idea that, you know, that led to this you know, launch of this particular school. Uh, we're extremely happy, you know, grateful to all the alumni who have contributed. I'll touch upon some of that a little later. So what we have done is that we have designated 30 acres of the campus uh, for the medical school. So I'm sure there is a visit, uh, if time permits. You can see that <laughs> this school is being constructed now. So it's a 700 crore project. <clears throat> there are about 500 beds hospitals coming up, the clinical disciplines are identified here from cardiology to radiology. Uh, and then of course the R&D centers, some of them have already taken off. I'll talk about a couple of uh, you know, projects that we have. Uh, these centers really we identified based on the need and also the expertise that we have on campus. So we have already you know, onboarded several clinicians who are very keen on these areas who are part of our uh, visiting adjunct faculty and collaborative, you know, physicians in many of these disciplines. You can see that telemedicine, robotics, A in healthcare, cardiovascular and pulmonary research and so on. You know, we have a number of, you know, such centers. So we have about 90 faculty members who are from the engineering, science and humanities who are part of the school now. So we will be hiring uh, full-time clinical faculty on this school in one year from now because we expect the uh, the hospital to be ready uh, in about two years from now. So in 2025, by this time, the, the hospital will be functional, right? You know, that's what it is. By then, we'll have close to about 60 to 70 clinical physicians. The faculty will be part of it. So it's going to make a large uh, pool of you know, researchers who are working on multiple areas, uh, really product developments or solutions, uh, which uses the engineering and technology as the tool. This is the map, uh, it's towards the you know, uh, Shivli Gate on the other side, so you can see that it's a green uh, plot that where the medical school is coming up. Uh, you know, we are grateful, we have a founder circle, we have uh, Mr. Rakesh Kangwal who contributed, and we have the founder circle, Dr. Dave Janaja is here, and we have <laughs> League of Founders, and, and I mean, really we are grateful because they have been with us in every step that we have taken so far. This is a, you know, five years already we have spent and last two to three years have been significant investment in terms of thought process as to how the school should come up, including how this, you know, the hospital should be, how futuristic should be, what should be the focus of research and so on. And we are very, very grateful to everyone who are on the screen who have really contributed a lot in terms of their advice, energy, and so on. So this is one project that I would like to highlight. This is called as Hridayantra. I don't know if you could you know, find some time. You can visit actual lab there to see the prototype. Uh, you know, the LVAD is the, you know, is, the, is the name, technical name for the otherwise commonly called uh, artificial heart. There are many 
patient would die because the heart failed to, you know, uh, function. And if you can put this LVAD uh, device, then they can survive another 20, 30 years easily. So, you know, this is this is what it is. But the biggest challenge is that it is it is uh, prohibitive. You know, it's about one and a half. 1.4 crores is what one device cost, and then you add the hospitalization, other surgery, and others. It, it's really not something that many could afford. So therefore, the idea is to you know develop one and bring it within the reach of a common man. If you can you know develop an LVA device and which is about 10 lakhs, you know that would be a huge huge difference to this society. So that's what we have done with ventilator as well. So the cost was brought down to about 40% of what is being, you know, sold now. So this is uh, what Helvad and, uh, you know, one of the major, uh, you know, mentors for this program is uh, Dr. Devi Shetty. He's part of our team who really asked us to develop this. I mean, he's, I would say that he's the brain behind the whole thing. Uh, and what we have is that we have uh, a prototype which is ready. So we already identified a lab where we can do the animal trials uh, because this is fully functional. We tested for everything, so right from the design to materials to everything is developed in built uh, in 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 house. So we have this prototype ready. So we are going to test it in either uh, in buffalo or pig. These are the two animal models that is you know uh, normally people try for such kind of device. And we are ready with that, and, and I'm sure in about one year from now, uh, it should be ready for a clinical trial. So that's that's what our hope is, and if it goes through, then we are really here for a big breakthrough. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks for the appreciation. Really, uh, uh, it means a lot. So I mean, for this hospital, of course, there are a variety of ways by which you know uh, people can contribute because this is something we thought that it's. You know, this medical school, one of course R&D, we are looking at medtech as as major focus, but we are also looking at solutions, you know, something like could have impact on the society. So we are in discussion with the state government for forming what is called as a digital stack for the, you know, for the Uttar Pradesh population. So, and combine it with telemedicine. So this is something in advanced uh, stage of finalization. We already signed an MOU with, are about to sign an MOU with the UP government. And uh, one of the, CSR foundations is going to, you know, almost agree to fund as close to 50 crores to, you know, enable this process. Something that is already coming up as part of the medical school is the PG residence, uh, you know, block, which would house all the uh, doctors, residents, senior residents, is about 90 studio apartment that has come in, and we already done the Bhumi Pujan for this uh, medical school. And uh, for its academic program, that's what important, you know. So. You know, the current regulations, you know, unlike the engineering, science, and humanities, you know, programs, IIT can really launch any academic program. You don't need to get permission from anybody. Uh, but for medical curriculum, it is something that we have to reach out to the MCI equivalent. Again, there's a commission that, that uh, you know, a body that recognizes the degree, so they have given a template you have to fit into that. It doesn't really allow any, any deviation from that. But that's not our focus. We thought that we should have, uh, you know, next generation uh, clinicians who who are trained in in science, engineering, and medicine. So that's our focus. So one of the focus, of course, is to have a tie-up with, you know, leading uh, universities. Uh, they have such options. For example, University of Melbourne have pathways to MD program. So you know, you can be an engineer, but you spend another three years to finish that, then you'll have a PhD. So that's what we are in discussion with. So we signed an MOU with the University of Melbourne towards that possibility. So they will, we'll have four-year undergraduate program here. There could be biomedical engineering or any of the engineering discipline or a BS program in biomedical sciences. Then they go for MD program there. So that's, that's what we are planning, uh, you know, uh, in long term. So that is something that we are very, very happy that University of Melbourne is very, very open to that possibility. So we are working on that. Uh, yeah, so goals for 2025, which is not far away. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's about a year from now, but then we have looking at increasing the faculty strength to 650. Of course, we'll be crossing the student strength to 10,000. That puts on, you know, a, you know, uh, you had to have more buildings, of course, complete expansion of the academic infrastructure, 
residential complexes you have to bring in for both students and faculty. And of course, the School of Sustainability is already launched, but you know, the infrastructure has to be created, so that is, that's something that we are looking at. So we are looking at you know, various possibilities. For example, one is the School of Entrepreneurship. That's something that we are in discussion. School of Data Science and AI you know, is something that we are discussing as a possibility, and, and Gangwa School, anyway, has already started. Uh, the challenge, of course, uh, you know, the, in the changing scenario, we no longer get the kind of a grant that we used to get from the government. These days, uh, any infrastructure that, that you create, including, for example, equipments, you know, you have to buy from your own earnings. So what the government does is it gives you a loan, which is called as the HEFA loan, Higher Education Fund Authority of India. Through Canara Bank, they give you the loan. And we have to repay that in about 10 years. So we have taken approval for about 1,000 crores loan, and we have already availed 600 crore loan, another 400 crore loan we have taken. So this is for the infrastructure that we have planned you know, in the next four or five years to come. And of course, we have to repay. It's about 1,000, meaning you have to repay about 100 crore a year. So that's the challenge. So, you know, which is primarily comes from our earnings from the R&D or from you know, endowment or from the fee and our IPR commercialization and so on. So that's, that's the challenge. So when we put back there, then our, you know, how much we can invest for the new, you know, research projects when the faculty, you know, join. These are the challenges that we have. So we have to really generate resources for that. So that's, of course, infrastructure, students, faculty. You want to give higher seed grants for the faculty who join, therefore they can kickstart their activities or they can give scholarship for the students who are needy and of course awards and travel grants and so on. So these are some of these uh, that some of you can really contribute to. But then there are other modes of contribution, for example, engage with the institute. You know, we'll be happy to have you as a visiting faculty, adjunct faculty, if, you know, if, 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 if you could contribute in certain departments or new programs, that would be fantastic. So we also have what is called a professor of practice. You know, you are a, uh, an expert in a given area and there is an academic program where you really think that we could have your expertise uh, of great use there. We could offer this professor practice, which you know, even without a PhD, one can become a faculty in IIT Kanpur. Yeah, so and of course, you know, there are other avenues, even in ranking, if you can rank the institute, uh, that would be a great help because you know, the perception certainly is one of the major criteria for ranking. So that's the brief about the institute. Uh, sorry for rushing through because we are running late, so I didn't get into the details, but I'll be happy to take any questions or queries or suggestions. Thank you very much. Please, yeah. Is it now at four? I mean, what are the prime, primary reasons for this uh, downgrading, if I may use that word? Well, I, uh, perhaps you are, uh, you know, there are no ranking then. It's more of a perception, right? Yeah. So if you, if you ask anybody, even I'll tell you the 14th, uh, November 14th, when the School of Sustainability was launched, even the minister said, I consider IIT Kanpur as number one, though the number officially is number four in engineering, you know? So the ranking is something that, uh, you know, if you really look at the national ranking that if you talk about, uh, the global is something different. But if you really look at the national ranking, I think if you really look at this, you know, what are the parameters people uh, evaluate? Of course, it, there is a funding, how much funding you brought in, this is one. And then your publication ratio, like faculty to publication, how many students you have graduated. These are the, some of the parameters. So if we really compare the older IITs, IIT Kanpur is smaller as compared to Bombay, Madras, Kharagpur, or Delhi, right? So they have grown uh, probably about, uh, you know, uh, you know, there are faculty who have been there for about four or five years. So as I said, in the last five years, we have recruited 200 faculty members. So the number has grown, but not everyone would start contributing in terms of publication. So you have to wait for four or five years. Like, it's, you know, when they talk about it, it's, it's almost like 40% of the faculty are new, right? So they would take some time to start publishing, right? That, that would kick in. And second, of course, it's, uh, it's also like 
what is your fact, you know, sanction strength? You know, if you really look at it, how do you calculate the sanction strength? It is the number of the students, and then for roughly about for every student, 10 students, you should have one faculty. So then you are looking at somewhere about 900 faculty members. So we have, you know, less than 600. So, but when they calculate for the publication, they calculate for the 900, right? So, so it will take some time for you to catch up there. That's one way of looking at it, right? And of course, if you have more faculty, you're going to be getting more research grants. That again adds up to that. It's not normalized, right? That's what it is. Uh, having said that, there is another ranking one can say, talk about JE as a ranking also, if that is the case, you know? So that's the, the different, you know, it's altogether a different uh, discussion for that, yeah. What, uh, well, uh, there are certain initiatives that are taken, right? You know, if say, anyone who is in the top 100, if they join, so we said that we'll give you a complete fee waiver and so on. So these are some of the initiatives. And of course, we had to really publicize as to how good the institute is, right? If you have, if you have to compare any, anyone who is in the top 50 or 100, they have a choice, you know, where they wish to go. So why would they decide, for example, IIT Bombay versus IIT Kanpur? So, you know, what we know is that the metros really help. That is one of the major attractions. It's not necessarily the institute. Things have changed now, you know, there's one. And of course, if you really bring it down to like top thousand and so on, so you don't see a big difference between IIT Madras and IIT Kanpur and so on. So it's only if you take the top 100, 200, 250, then you will find the difference that Bombay, Delhi, you know, take the major. But yes, so this is something that we really make it, you know, compelling. So there could be unique programs that are not there elsewhere that you can start. You know, this is something that we can do. Or we can make it like, you know, go to place. I mean, that's it's a competitive world. We have to really do that, yeah. Um, quick question, sorry. Um, with, you know, with super specialty hospitals like Max, et cetera, around, what competitive advantage do you think IIT Kanpur brings in setting up a super specialty hospital there? Well, uh, there is no super special hospital in Kanpur. That's number one, right? And, and, and if you really look at uh, uh, the brand value of IIT Kanpur, you know, this, this hospital will be part of IIT Kanpur. So that, that's really a great, you know, uh, enabler for, you know, they would certainly believe that they are going to give a better service, you know, that's, that's there. So, but if you really look at, we have done a, you know, cost analysis as well as to what is the number of patients from Kanpur or adjoining area go elsewhere, you know. So if you really look at it, there's hardly any hospital around it. You know, the, the hospitals that are there in Kanpur, you really do not <coughs> categorize them as super specialty hospital. They either have to go to uh, Lucknow, a few that is coming up, or mostly they go to Delhi or Mumbai. And the specialty that we have taken or the speciality that are not available, you know, for which always there is a demand, uh, you know, in this area because there aren't many hospitals that are there. So we are not going into orthopedics. We are not going into some of these that normally, you know, is some of the hospitals here catered to. So that's a very unique, uh, you know, discipline that you have looked at here. Yeah. Uh, firstly, Director, congratulations on all that you sh uh, shared with us and it's been a very impressive journey. Um, my question really is, back in the day when we were on campus, there were possibly four destinations for, a, I'm talking about the UG batches, right. uh, post the UG, either do a job in the engineering disciplines, go to B school in India, go abroad for higher studies, or go for civil services. So there was the broadly the four categories of uh, immediate destinations. Uh, can you share us with how, uh, these categories have changed over these years, and do you find uh, more number of people today choosing to do jobs after all the fantastic work that you're showing us uh, within India? That's right. You know, the, the number of students who go abroad is very minimal now. It's less than 20 percent. The majority stay there, and a significant number of the students get into these startups and so on. So that's a huge, huge shift in, the, in terms of where the graduates go. Uh, any data points you can share? Uh, in terms of uh, percentages, it's about 70 percent of them stay on, on within the country. They don't go abroad. So only see there are two categories. Only the higher studies about 20 percent, right? So that's what uh, you know they may go abroad. 
but it's 80% of them, 70 to 80%, it's variation from best to best, but that's that they stay within the country. That's very heartening, yeah. thank you. My question is that you, we can't have a, a world-class facility here without good connectivity. Is IIT Kanpur doing anything working with government to make that a reality? Kanpur used to have an airport and then it kind of disappeared. Uh, yeah. Nearest airport is Lucknow, but that's, I mean, we took bus today, it took two and a half hours. Just to add on to you that Kanpur is a new airport now, okay? They have built a new terminal that was inaugurated, they're going to have a landing, you know, uh, even they, they, right now they have the, they got, you know, you can, we can have even the late evening and early morning people can, you know, play flights can land that they're going to put. So that will, that will happen, it's a matter of few months, you know, already we have flights from Kanpur to Bangalore, Delhi, Mumbai, Ahmedabad, we have flights, right? And if you talk about road connectivity, uh, from the other gate of IIT Kanpur, up to Noida, you have expressway. Completely toll road, you know. That's that's coming up. You know, see, this is already there. Mandana is the place. If you cross that, from there to Noida, you have expressway. So there are a lot of changes happening. I think that would really make a difference. For example, the new airport that is coming up in Noida, right? The biggest one, Jaiwar Airport. So from there, it will be four and a half hours. You can be in Kanpur, or there's a new highway that is being built. If that happens in four hours, one could be in Kanpur. So it's changing. So, but certainly it is not as attractive as metro, but it has its own charm. You know, the kind of a campus that you have, you can't have it in Delhi or Mumbai, right? You know, these are the, you know, there's something that we can really be proud of. But, you know, we are, as part of Kanpur, the state has to develop, the infrastructure has to go up. So you have a metro now in front of IIT. I, I'm sure, I don't know whether you have seen that. There's a metro train from IIT Kanpur to the Motijil now, but that's being expanded. Two other lines are coming, the subway is being built. So it's changing. I mean, there are a lot of infrastructure developments happening, yeah. Thank you. Uh, which is closer to the airstrip on the other side here, yeah, right? So we have now three gates, like the one that main gate that you know, that we have another gate. Now, for non kari people need not enter inside. You know, they, there's a road that there's a gate there. So that directly, you know, uh, leads to that expressway. That's, you know, up to the Lucknow Agra expressway it goes, you know. So that's a toll road. And from there you go to Agra, from Agra you have Delhi, you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's fantastic roads coming. So it's uh, great to see a lot of new buildings coming up. But I was very concerned to see all the aging infrastructure, especially the dorms, you know, hall one, yeah. hall two, yeah. hall three. Yeah. So what's being done to kind of uh, upgrade and re, uh, improve the infrastructure, the aging one, how to, sure, sure. what maintenance work is being done? Right, uh, I'll tell you the challenge. It's not that, uh, you, know, t you know, we have to do the maintenance work. The challenge has been until recently is that, see COVID, there's a lockdown. After that, when we started the undergraduate program, so we became what is called the asynchronous, you know, batches. There are students who are entering in December or November and then there are old batches that is anyway starting in end of July, you know. So therefore, if you want to really uh, do a maintenance for any hostel, then the hostel should be vacated. Normally it happens for the undergraduates during the summer term. So until, you know, this, this term we have synchronized everything. So we'll be, this summer we plan to, you know, fix many of these things. That's what we have taken up. So that was the challenge because, you know, after the COVID, students were spread out. We cannot push them to one hostel. And then the number of students, you know, girls' students have increased, so we converted one of the boys' hostel into girls' hostel. So these are challenges that we had that we could not take up that, but that's something that we will take up. I mean, it's extremely important that we make sure that the hostels are maintained. Yeah, yeah. What are the it's close to 1,300, yeah. Thank you very much, really appreciate your participation.